Okay, so I've switched over now to Anime Pro, and um, you'll notice that it's very similar, the concepts here, to what we would have been working with when we were talking about Storyboard Pro. So, for example, um, we've got these different windows that we can rearrange here. And oh, one other thing that I should mention that I think I forgot to mention when I was talking about Storyboard Pro is these triangles here. And these triangles are something that um, will allow you to temporarily minimize or maximize a spot on your workspace. Um, so, for example, let's say as you're drawing, if you want to temporarily make your camera larger, you can click on the arrow that faces this way, and that's going to just make your window larger. But you can see that there's that triangle that's still over there, so you can always click on the triangle to get it back. So let's say, for example, I might have my workspace set up exactly the way it is right now, I'm drawing, doing whatever, and um, I want to see more of my X sheet because my X sheet is a long window, but I've got it kind of stuck up here. I can hide my tool properties window there at the bottom to get more room to look at my X sheet at the top, but I can always get my tool properties window back. And I think these little triangles are something that I, I like to use a lot, actually, because I work on a very small computer. I'm working here on a MacBook Air. So the resolution isn't big. And um, the, the same thing might be the case if you're working on a Cintiq, because you're, you've got sort of a limited uh, amount of real estate there on your screen. So I think it can be very handy to become familiar with using those triangles and uh, become comfortable with them so that uh, you don't do it by mistake, uh, but you are always able to you know, make use of them when you want to make use of them. Um, so then, this, the same things that I showed you on Storyboard Pro will, will apply here. So if I use my O shortcut, I can change the maximum size of my brush tool. Shift O will let me change the minimum size of my brush tool. And, um, you know, you have also the ability with your brush to hold down the Shift key. And in this case, though, Shift and Alt does something slightly different. Shift and Alt um, is not going to give you those increments. That's something that was done a little bit more recently. That was done in Storyboard Pro 2. So um, you'll just have to click uh, on the regular sort of shift key, but you don't have the ability to do the shift and the alt with increments. But that will come in the next version of Anime Pro. And it's also in Harmony at the moment. So um, you have that ability in Harmony right now. When you're using the line tool, you can hold down shift, and that will give you the shift with the increments in it. So if you need to get those really perfect edges in Animate Pro, then I would suggest going to your line tool and um, drawing there with your line tool instead. And you can always get it like that. So, okay, and um, what else did I mention when I was in Storeboard Pro? I talked about shortcuts, so the same thing that I mentioned with the overridable shortcuts is also going to be the case when we're talking about Animate Pro. So if we go to the Preferences for Anime Pro, then in the Shortcuts tab, you know, here's where you're going to have all of the shortcuts for your tools. So um, you've got your brush tool, there is B, Close Gap tool, and all of the other tools are in here as well. Uh, so one of the ones that I mentioned that people like to use a lot is the uh, Paint Unpainted uh, tool, which I can see right here. So that one I can see is Alt and Y. So, uh, and whenever you see that word overridable, that means that if you press Y without pressing Alt, that it's going to temporarily select that tool. So, let's say if I'm in my brush tool and I'm drawing, and then I select Y, that's going to bring up my paint unpainted tool while I have Y clicked. So, hopefully you guys can see why that's really exciting, I think, as a, as a workflow opportunity there to speed up your uh, process. And um, now also, the, you'll notice that there's the workspace toolbar that is pretty much exactly the same as the one that I showed you at Storeboard Pro. So you can take any of these workspaces that are there by default, you can copy them, you can add them to your um, toolbar there, and then they'll show up there. So you can create your own workspace and you can um, customize your workspace to look the way that you want it. Um, in Animate and Animate Pro and Harmony. So that's definitely something that I think would be worth taking a few minutes to set up on the front end so that you save the time on the back end. Um, 
Okay, and then there's one last concept that I want to talk to you about with the anime line and with Harmony that uh, I didn't talk to you about with Storyboard Pro because it doesn't usually come into play as much, but it does a little bit. Um, and that's the concept of the focus. And I just want to talk about that really quickly because the focus is this red outline that you see around the window. And the red outline will follow me when I click in any of these windows. And um, so you can be drawing, and then if you want to do something in your timeline, if you select your timeline, now the focus is around my timeline. There are some shortcuts that depend on where the focus is. So, for example, that nudging shortcut, um, the alt and down arrow, up, alt and up arrow. You need to have the focus around your camera view in order for that shortcut to work, uh, because the nudging tools are not going to work in your timeline. So, there are a couple of different ways of working with the focus. I personally like to leave focus on mouse center off, so I leave it the way it is by default. And when I want to get from one window to another, or from another window back to my drawing window, I just hold down the space bar and I click. And I like to do it that way because I know the space bar always brings up the hand. And so for me it's really easy if I, if I select something else, I'm working in the other views, to hold down the hand and then click to get my focus around this window. You can also click in any of the gray space. Okay, So if I click in the gray space in the tool properties in the timeline or at the top here next to where those tabs are, that's also going to get my focus back in this window. So that's a couple of ways of getting the focus where you want. Now, if those ways are you know not fast enough for you, or what, or there are a lot of people that prefer focus on mouse center. So let's talk about that for a second. If I go to my preferences, then you can find this in the general tab. So the focus on mouse enter property. Now, if I select this option, what it's going to do is you can see that that red outline is now following wherever my mouse is. And I'll just tell you the only reason that I don't use this option that much is that sometimes when I'm working with a tablet I might like put my pen down for a second to type something in if I want to use my keyboard and when you put your mouse down it might change the window that your focus is around so that's the only thing that sometimes I find it slows me down a little bit but it's really a personal pre preference thing if you prefer to work with focus and mouse enter uh, like most of the people out there then um, go ahead and do that if you don't prefer, then you can use the space bar to get the uh, focus where you want it, or you can click in the gray space at the top of any of those windows. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn it back off again because I just like it off. So um, that's it for our um, tip of the week this week on the interface. Um, I'm sure that there are many other things that I can think about to share with you regarding the interface. So um, as I go along in these tips of the week, if, if there are things that I come across that I think I want to show you or talk to you about, regarding the interface, then I'll bring those up as I go. But I wanted to just give a quick overview of that uh, while I was here because um, this is something that I think can slow people down if they don't know about the O shortcut, for example, um, or if they don't know about the cutter tool. And in Animate and Animate Pro, by the way, when you're using your cutter tool, then you also have this option in here called Mouse Gesture, which is pretty similar to what I was doing in Storyboard Pro, except in this case I can drag a line and the only things you need to have to make this work is you need to have the lasso on and you need to have this uh, button depressed. If you don't have the lasso, if you have the marquee, that is automatically going to uncheck itself. It doesn't work with the marquee. So you need to have the lasso on, but with your lasso on you can drag um, a line across and use it to, to cut that off. So I um, hope that was useful to you guys and I will see you next week.